Hello. This video will cover crypto and block cipher modes. Specifically, I'll be using OpenSSL, the AES algorithm, and as far as block modes we're going to be using, one is going to be electronic codebook, and the other is going to be cipher block chaining. Now, this video, of course, is made by me, Adrian Crenshaw, but it was inspired by a lab that Kevin Benton had us do for a class, and my understanding that was partly based on the crypto lab one from Seed. In cryptography, there's more than just the cryptographic algorithm involved. There's many ways you can implement a good cryptographic algorithm but still have the results be insecure. Now, this video is going to cover block cipher chaining modes. So we'll get in with that. The core focus of this, however, is if an enemy happens to have known some plain text in the past that was encrypted and you start sending out new cipher texts, can they tell something about these new cipher texts based on? previous things they've collected before. To give you an example, I'll use ROT13. No, no sane person would actually use this in reality, but it makes things nice and clear. Let's say that previously you captured that first message from an enemy combatant, and you figured out later on it means attack at dawn. If you see a very similar message later on with just a few things changed, and you know a little bit about the algorithm, you can go, you know, we think the first part is probably attack at. What's that last part? Well, it's not the singing group ABBA. See how this is sort of revealing? Gives a lot of information. Even though we can't decrypt the message necessarily, though this one we could, it still tells you something. It also works with better algorithms too, depending on how they do the blockchaining. Before I move into the next section, I should probably cover some of the basics of how XOR works. Essentially, XOR is exclusive OR. So you can think of it this way. You have an input, and you sort of have a bit mask. And every place where there's a 1, you can kind of think of it as inverting the value from the input. Or put another way, let's say we have a 1 and a 1 in. Well, we should get a 0 out. But if e for one of the places is only one single 1, we should get a 1 out. If both are 0, we should get a 0 out, and so on and so forth. The nice thing about XOR is you can do it fairly fast in hardware, and it's reversible, because if we take the output value from the previous example and XOR it again with our same key, we get the original input out. And this is very convenient for all sorts of operations. And if you're looking into cryptography and one-time pads, essentially, one-time pad is essentially this all the way out. You have a whole key that decides the entire message. Not exactly practical from a key exchange standpoint, but just bringing it up and as something else you can look up after this video. Anyway, we're going to be using this XOR system in the next slide or two. Electronic Codebook, or ECB, is probably the simplest of all the block cipher chaining modes. Essentially what you do is you take a chunk of plain text that whatever the block cipher size is. I'm going to be using AES 128, so that's 128 bits or 16 bytes. You take that in, you apply the key with the algorithm, and you get your output. The problem with this is, if you have the same input again and again, you will get the same output again and again. I'm going to visually illustrate that here shortly. Now, these graphics I stole from Wikipedia at the link you see at the bottom. Go out there and visit it. There's tons of other block cipher modes out there. This is just one of the most simplistic that and it's what I'm going to be covering in this video, along with our next contender. Cipher block chaining mode, or CBC. Now, with cipher block chaining mode, it's a little different. Essentially, you have, well, I hate to use the term feedback, because there's other algorithms out there that actually use feedback in their name. But you see how the plain text is XORed with an initialization vector. Those of you out there who have ever messed around with cracking web have maybe heard of initialization vectors. Well, we want this first block not always to encrypt the same thing. Actually, we want all the blocks not to always encrypt the same thing. So we come up with an initialization vector that's most likely going to be given to whoever is going to decrypt it as well. We XOR the plain text of that, then feed that into our block cipher encryption algorithm, then take the resulting cipher text from that, go back, XOR the next section of plain text, the next block, and so on and so forth over and over again. The next slide illustrates it a little bit better perhaps. Essentially, we have our initialization vector. It gets thrown in along with our plain text. 
we get a cipher text out that gets XOR to the next plain text into our block cipher encryption that gets sent on to XOR to the next plain text and so on and so forth and by doing this we get very different results the same uh, values were not necessarily encrypted to the same thing and I'm going to visually show that in the live section of this video next let's give you a more visual illustration of how different block cipher modes work the first thing we will do is we're going to encrypt some text and see the results as you can see I have a couple files in here the ones we're going to look at right now are dawn.txt and noon.txt so let me cat those out one says the attack shall be made at dawn love iron geek and of course the other one as you might expect says pretty much the exact same thing except for dawn is replaced by noon now let's go ahead and encrypt those I'm going to use open SSL to do that with the following command open SSL tell it to encrypt tell it what kind of algorithm we want to use in this case AES128 using electronic codebook we're going to take in our dawn.txt file output it as dawnciphered.txt this is just so I can break the command up into two lines and this is my key and this is my initialization vector even though electronic codebook shouldn't be using an initialization vector it gives me errors if I don't put it in there I could be missing something so I'm sure someone will email me if I am alright that encrypted that output we won't show it for a bit yet now let's go ahead and encrypt the same file with the same key actually sorry a different file with the same key and same IV in this case we're going to encrypt noon now I could try catting each one of these out like I could cat out dawn ciphertext and I could cat out noon ciphertext but you really can't see the differences that will there because the characters that come up are not necessarily all printable you though you might see some similarities right there a better thing to do would be to use hex dump so let me actually do a hex dump first on noon and I'm gonna do a quick hex dump on dawn ciphered now you can see there's some differences right here on this particular block however the other blocks are the same and so when we look at this one two three four five six seven eight so we have 16 bytes across or 128 bits so you can see that this is that one particular block that's different this is where noon is dawn or dawn is noon however let's say an adversary deciphered one message because they had the plain text someplace and they knew that it's their attack at dawn well if they saw another message that looked like this they might realize hey that might very well be attack at noon this just give you an idea now I'm going to show you how cipher block chaining works um, but I'm going to do it in a more visual way I could apply it to these text files as well but instead let's do something more fun and apply this to an image the first time I've ever seen this done was actually on the Wikipedia entry and then Kevin has doing the lab and it's pretty neat to look at first thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out the size of a file that we have out there so I'm gonna do me an ls and dash l and you can see we have a little bitmap out there and this is its current size the reason for running the ls command is to find the size of our bitmap file so now that we have that we can simply take away 54 from it when we start messing around with the header but first of all we want to set, save the first 54 bytes of the bitmaps header so uh, we can use it again in a bit so I'm going ahead and doing that using the head command telling it just to grab the first 54 bytes from plain.bmp and throw that into ecb.bmp this is going to be the basis for our eventual electronic codebook encrypted image now we're going to go ahead and apply encryption to the rest of it using once again the AES128 ECB algorithm in comes plain.bitmap out goes attempt.bin 
and our key and our initialization vector. And what this tail command is going to do is it's going to take this temp.bin we created in the previous command. It automatically ran because I copied both commands back to back. And it's going to go ahead and take that temp.bin, take the last this many bytes, this number being 54 less than this number, and it's going to append it to ECB BMP. Now I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to go ahead and do it with our other file. Or sorry, with our other uh, block cipher chaining method. So I went ahead and saved that header. Next up, let's go ahead and apply the encryption, and this time I'm using cipher block chaining mode. And then I'm going ahead and take that particular output, put in temp bin again, because I already well, I don't need the previous temp bin, and we throw that into our cvc.bmp. Now let's go actually look at what all those BMPs actually were. And you see why this gives a more visual illustration than the text I was using earlier. This is actually that base bitmap. You can see it's my logo, a couple bars, and some text. Now let's go look at what the electronic codebook version looks like after it's been encrypted. Now we had to save the headers, otherwise it would come out as a garbage bitmap. But by saving the headers, we can get a nice visual illustration as I'm about to show you. So electronic codebook gives us that. As you can see, while it looks pretty jo uh, jobbled up, you get some information from it. Now if this text was bigger, you'd probably be able to read Iron Geek was here. You could see what I was saying. You could also tell there were some bars here, and you might even recognize the silhouette of my logo. Now let's see what cipher block chaining looks like. As you can see, it looks completely like static and gives much, much less information to an attacker. But that's the rough visual illustration of the differences between at least electronic codebook and cipher block chaining. There's tons of other block cipher modes out there that you should probably take a look at and there'll be some links and some information in the next section. Here are a few links that may be of interest to you for further research. One is the Wikipedia entry on block cipher modes of operation where I took a lot of my graphics from and also you may want to check out the original seed lab that this video was partially based on. Thank you for your time.